um, board members through email, um, basically saying that they think it's coming to and that they've come out that they are against that, um, taking local control away from, um, away from townships. And they actually did send a survey, it was just for supervisors, and um, there really wasn't much to it. It was just, uh, oh, there's a page, I turned it to Josh, but um, does your township have or is it in the process of hosting utility scales, utility scale renewable energy facilities? And well, yes or no, um, uh, let's see, and it kind of skips you down. Um, how many facilities are in your township? What size are the facilities? And then um, have you declined any applications for renewable facilities? And then that was it. And so in additional comments, I did let them know about the Met Tower um, uh, that went up and that there, we had a, had a company interested or had, that had um, uh, said that they would like to do a development, but nothing's happened to date. So that's all I've gotten from the MTA. Um, and then uh, today, uh, I did have two citizens actually send this uh, to me. Um, it's a, a resolution from such and such township expressing support to maintain local control for the following, including but not limited to short-term rentals, solar farms, wind farms, and gravel pits. Um, I guess I'll just kind of buzz through it here. Uh, whereas the ability of local jurisdictions to determine for themselves which projects should and should not be in their local community, um, what plans are best and reasonable for each neighborhood rather than these decisions be forced on the townships without the best interest at hand. And um, whereas the legislature of the state of Michigan may propose an attempt to pass into law bills that strip away local community control on these issues. And whereas the township will protect our community's land from special interest trying to strip away local control within legal limits. And um, whereas the township board of such and such township feels strongly that our local government is best able to assess the needs of our community. Now, therefore, the board of such and such township resolves the following. Um, township is opposed to the legislature, legislature of the state of Michigan proposing and passing bills that take away local control. Uh, to the township is opposed to corporate prioritized actions such as building wind farms, solar farms, and gravel pits in our community. The township supports the coalition efforts of Our Home, Our Voice, Inc., a grassroots coalition of local officials and community organizers across Michigan advocating to maintain local control of land use by promoting reasonable re regulation in our widely diverse communities. Um, so um, we've been given this by a couple of residents for consideration. Um, there's nothing out there right now, so I don't propose that we take any action on this at this time, but I do think that our our citizens, our constituents want to hear from us on our um, feelings as far as uh, if this proposed um, legislation goes through. Um, I will say myself, I'm uh, adamantly against taking local control away from townships. Um, the people should decide what's best for their communities. Um, and uh, I just, I, I, don't, uh, I don't support that. So if anyone else has any comments, feel free to. Shouldn't we consider on doing this? ahead of time, even yeah. before what, even if what yeah. comes out or not, so we have it in place, yeah. whether that happens or not. Then this will be um, voted on within our township and we'll be back up. Um, my thought was to wait till our October meeting and, and bring it up for consideration um, to vote, but I don't know what's everybody else's thoughts, more than just the two of us here. I mean, I, I, I do not um, uh, support it, that legislation, but the proposed legislation. Have I seen it? No. What I read in the news, I do not support what I've read in the news. I see. Well, I'm just saying uh, to consider on having this in place before anything happens. Will it happen this month or next month? I'm not sure, but if we could get something, um, you know, within you know, within our agenda to get it completed. So you're saying let's look I at it and consider next, next I mean, this meeting. This just came in like literally right. this afternoon. Correct. And I would yes. say let's let's send it out to everybody okay. so you guys can all look at it and consider it um, for for the next meeting um, for approval. That's that's my stance on it. Okay. Um, so we're gonna move on from that. 
supervisor's report, uh, the assessing department, uh, we do have a request for tra uh, training uh, reimbursement from Heidi, our assessor. Um, she said normally she would have asked ahead of time, but she did already go ahead and, and register for the class, but there was only limited seats. Um, and uh, there's, it's up in Gaylord, and it's a two and a half day um, training. And she also is the assessor for another township actually up in the UP. And um, she is proposing to split that 50-50 uh, with Cato um, in this other township. So our cost would be, um, to reimburse her, would be $187 um, for the, the um, seminar. There's multiple classes, I think. Um, and then she also, um, as opposed to getting the nightly lodging, uh, which the rates are $85 to $144, she wants to camp nearby, which would be, um, our share would be $52. <coughs> Um, and she's not requesting any food, but any reimbursement for food or mileage. Um, so I don't know that we've budgeted, budgeted anything um, for assessor training, and I don't know if we've done this in the past, but I don't you know, have an issue with this. Um, we want our assessors to definitely... I, I make a motion that we approve Heidi's request for reimbursement for $177. Okay. Second. 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 Uh, I'm sorry. So a total of 239 and then we're going to have to make a line item adjustment to get that in our budget. We can give another township board training. Okay, well, uh, maybe <laughs> we might have to adjust that oh, contingency uh, or something. Yeah. Yep. Um, I'll support that. Uh, motion's been made and supported. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. So I will let uh, Heidi know that we will reimburse her the two hundred and thirty nine dollars. Um, we've also got a request um, from the attorneys to be able, to, from the assessors to be able to talk to our attorney. They did get a um, uh, motion, or what do I want to say, a docket number for somebody who's filing with the Michigan Tax Tribunal, um, and. Uh, I don't think that's happened that often, um, but they did say in the past that they have talked to the attorney and they need the attorney to help them kind of work through the process. So um, I guess I'm looking for the board's approval to let um, Heidi contact uh, Foster Swift uh, with regard to um, this case. Uh, there's support. support. Okay, motion's been made and supported. Um, further discussion? This would just be a one-time approval, yeah. And she asked me if she could um, get the contact info, but I wanted to bring it before the board. So, any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. <coughs> um, and then we also did schedule a meeting uh, on October 9th um, to meet with the assessors just to kind of discuss roles and responsibilities because it seems like uh, Debbie has taken maybe a, a step back and is wanting, I think she referred to herself as deputy assessor. Um, and I think in the past, you know, we, we hired Deb Thrasher, who's got a lot of experience. And then she had her um, assistant, Lisa, who is no longer her assistant. She hired Heidi, who's um, very good to work with. I really enjoy working with Heidi, but I just think we need to like understand <laughs> what the long-term plan is here with our assessors. and who's doing what, and just making sure we have our bases covered. So um, Marcy uh, is going to meet with them to discuss um, land divisions and just making sure that process goes smoothly. And then Joyce, um, after um, when you get out of work, do the second session with them to kind of just talk about, you know, from a treasurer's perspective. So just wanted to make note of that. Do we have a new contract drawn up then with Heidi on there as our assessor instead of Deb? Well, we don't really have a contract. That's That's kind of on the to-do list. We have so to, we should have a contract somewhere. Well, we, we have a we, sentence. We did, we did that, but we wrote it down. Well, we do, I think it says, doesn't it, that Hi Deb and Heidi will be our assessors for three years or something? Oh, we probably have that in the bill. Uh, uh, they, they, there's something, and yeah. we need to look at that. We, because in the past, we, we did one or two years, just a written agreement, basically. Yeah, it was more I think in 2012, they had a contract when okay. I start, right before I started and when they started. Okay. So I would I would be interested in look I have some samples because it's been on my radar to do this. Yeah. I mean just something to look into twenty twelve you said? Yeah. Okay. Just when I started, because that's when I started. Okay. 
Yeah, it's usually happening in my room. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Send me a little stuff. <laughs> well, let's so, let's all put it on our, our little notepad to try to find that. Um, uh, legal department, um, you just heard the uh, the bill for the um, combined training that we did with the other townships. That was, uh, worked out really well. And then also we did have to talk to the attorney um, to get the CBA bylaws. Um, and also uh, we needed some assistance as far as with our public hearing. We had to kind of structure that. Uh, in a, we have to actually have two public hearings with our variance request because the individual is also asking for an interpretation of the ordinance. So that was kind of her um, solution to crossing our T's and dotting our I's. And uh, so, otherwise, probably once we get further along in our security uh, system project, we probably will need to be reaching out to her for a sample policy. Uh, roads, we had our third Brian application done just before Labor Day. Seemed to, I heard some good remarks about um, upping the Brian, so it seems like that was well received by the community. Um, Wilcox paving is kind of our last paving um, job that's on the docket, and that uh, I talked to Mark last week at the Road Commission, and he said his goal was end of the month. Did you hear? Um, and then we also might have a possible solution for the culvert um, out on Saturday Road, which is preventing us from doing anything out there because uh, Eagle is involved with that and we kind of have to deal with the curb gate. Mark called me up so they had plumbing coming from downstate to, they can put an inside liner in it. And even if it's smashed down or dirty, they'll clean it out and put it in there and hold it for five hours with clean, it expands out. And they, they like it with two tubes, this is ideal. They can do one side, block the water, do their work, come back the next, I mean, wait five hours, let it go, and come back the next day and do the other tube. And it'd be a whole lot cheaper than putting a, a bridge in there, expensive bridge or a box culvert. <coughs> that way you don't have to get the UP expense. And it'll actually fold better because it's smooth on the inside. And Randy's heard 50 years, I heard 75 years, I guarantee you we don't. Because they can't give me a quote. It's not like me, there's three jobs in the county they're getting quotes for. So I don't know if the quote they give us will be included if we do the other two. It'd be <coughs> if they come up with three. I, I haven't heard any numbers yet. This is just three days of last Thursday. Yeah, Mark yeah I just wanted the board to be aware yeah. that there could be a solution. It sounds like a decent stuff. solution. That maybe if we really are for money, if we get in time, I don't know. Because, I mean, that's what's holding up Saturday, right? Um, okay, uh, events and meetings recap. Um, I did attend the Michigan Participating Plan Seminar on August 9th. I uh, learned a lot of great information about, um, they had a, a speaker there on FOIA. Um, got some things maybe in the future we can look at uh, with that. Um, the grants that they offer, it's also, that's on our agenda a little bit later. Um, October 24th, possibly, is they're, they're proposing a new, new date for this um, the Montcalm Economic Alliance, I had mentioned, wanted to do a develop, developer day um, where they bring in developers into the community and do a tour. Um, it was originally supposed to be early October, and I'm looking at some other dates, and I think the first choice was October 24th, but I don't think that's confirmed yet. It was, um, uh, that's still um, up in the air. So just heads up on that. And then also got a, a last minute uh, email this afternoon, um, Montcalm County, or Montcalm chapter of the Michigan Township Association. Um, next chapter meeting is Tuesday, October 17th at 6 p.m. doesn't say where it's at. That's because we didn't have a venue yet, but I know where it's going to be now. It's going to be at the Montcalm County Road Commission. Oh. They have a new room there, so it'll be there. Okay. October 17th, Tuesday, October 17th at 6 p.m. It says we will have a state representative to address what is going on at the state level with the townships and answer any of our questions. Um, it starts at 6, dinner served at 6.30, cost is $15 a person and is open to any township official from any boards. So, um, uh, and the money, it looks like Winfield is kind of uh, hosting this, so money to be pretend to be in. So, um, <coughs> we'll need to get a uh, head count by October 10th. So if anybody's interested in going, I think, I think I've put me down, I would like to go to that. Let them know. Uh, I, have, I don't have any update on the trail project. I think last I knew they're still waiting to hear back on the SPARC grant. 
um, and cemetery. Um, I did talk to Brian briefly, and um, this is kind of what you mentioned, some, some work on trees, but in a future meeting, um, maybe we don't have so much going on, we could have him come in. I asked if he'd be willing to come in and just kind of talk about future planning for the cemetery, um, talk, kind of talk about uh, maybe extending some of the water lines out there, and I know there's some issues with the burning bush line and kind of where it's kind of encroaching over into where there's some plots, and so we're going to probably have to have a discussion, but um, future meeting. So that's all our reports, and let's move on into old business. So the MTA fall retreat, last time we had approved um, Marcy and myself to go and also offering up to the planning commission. Unfortunately, it doesn't sound like anybody can make it from the planning commission, so we will look at maybe a, a future training for them, similar to what we did for the ZBA. Um, but I do think we need to, uh, I have some numbers here too, Todd. So, and this is identical for each one, the two day, it's a two day conference for the trustee and the supervisor. So it's $365 by September 12th. So that's Wednesday, we'll have to get, get the registration sent in. That's the early bird rate. And then the hotel rate is 145. So probably tack on um, 20 bucks for all their taxes and all their add-ons. Uh, so I'd say 165 and then it'll be uh, two, day, two full days of training, so six, $60 each for reimbursement. So I'm coming up with $650 um, total cost for each of us. Who will be going? Yeah. Uh, yep, Marcia will be the third and the fourth, and I would be the fifth and the sixth. So a total of $1,300, and I think we're probably, we had budgeted $1,500 for four, and then you know Marcy and I had gone to that other um, training on the assessing and risk management as well, so we'll probably have to do a line item adjustment on that also. Who, who's hosting the MTA? Uh, that's MTA, yep, those uh, uh, retreats that we talked about last month. That lodging cost, I think, was only good until today. That uh, amount for lodging? Oh, I didn't know that. No. Do you have a, it's in the, it's in the little pamphlet. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I'm fine paying whatever difference I have oh, yeah. myself. I just, so you're I, I tried to get on to talk to them today, and I could not get anybody there. They wanted to call me back, and I was just too busy. I couldn't take a call back. So, so you have a motion to approve the fall retreat? So, yep, I look for a motion to approve the fall retreat to Brandy and Marcy. So moved. Is there a second? A second. Okay, and we'll just do that line item adjustment. Who, who supported it? Nope. Okay. 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 All right, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Uh, fire board appointment. Uh, so we opened it up uh, for applications through I think August 28th and ran a couple ads in the OT paper. Did, did anybody else? Okay. I'm going to make a motion then uh, that we appoint Clark Newell to the fire board for support. Motion. Motion's been made and supported. Is there any discussion? And just for the public's benefit, Clark had, had applied previously and we tabled that at our last meeting uh, just to open it up to the public in case anyone else was interested. Okay, any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Mm -hmm. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. We do not need any money. Uh, first Thursday of October, I think. So you'll let Clark know yeah. in October? October. Yeah. Okay. Uh, security system. So um, I Todd had got a quote from Big E Technologies. Um, Eric McLaughlin is the owner's name. And uh, he used to be the IT director at um, Montcalm County, and now um, he works managing a data center elsewhere now, but he has a um, part-time job, he calls it, of helping and consulting with smaller municipalities. Um, do you want to say anything specific about well, he, he, was, he was giving us three quotes for the two new computers in the office plus one computer he did be made for the camera system. Okay. And he was also included in his quote a fee to come and transfer all of the information from one to another. Yep. So um, I contacted him and um, had a good talk with him. I really liked him. Um, I think he does work for the village and they gave him good remarks as well. Um, I, I like the idea of having somebody 
as our IT you know, contractor to work with, because um, I certainly <laughs> don't have the um, knowledge to, to do anything with um, setting up computers. Um, but just a few things on that quote. So um, he has an extended warranty on that, and that is three years of on-site personal labor from HP Direct. Um, machine, and that's for machine malfunctions, not like if we had a lightning strike or something, it wouldn't cover that. But And then that warranty also comes with HP Wolf, which is HP's full protection suite. Um, so as long as we have um, the warranty, then we get that um, that protection suite as well, which is very important in today's day and age. Um, let's see. And he would, um, he has quoted uh, $85 um, per computer for him to do data data mat migration to transfer everything for old computers onto the new. Um, he said it takes him about an hour a computer, roughly. Um, and then I also, just as kind of a check, I called um, people from where I work, our IT department, and Eric did note this in his email to Todd that um, because of um, inventory shortages, his prices are a little higher than maybe in the past. He did note that. Um, and from what my people were saying that, yeah, he may, might be a little high on the uh, towers. Um, the monitors, those we probably, those are probably the biggest markup. Um, uh, we could probably get those cheaper if we went on Amazon. Um, and then kind of a third check, I also uh, reached out to uh, Ginger Dimhoff, who um, uh, is retired from Montcalm Community College and knows their IT people um, really well. And um, she just kind of uh, talked to them on their thoughts on when, what are the main considerations when you're buying a, a group of computers. And um, I guess I'll, Ginger, if you, William, if you would want to kind of share a little bit of what they said. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, they gave me, first of all, most important just to talk with each person that's going to be using the computer and find out what you're using it for. That's going to determine a whole lot, like what you need in it, instead of just a general, this is a really um, powerful computer, you know, for gaming or whatever. You don't need anything like that. And you don't want anything that's like just for home use, so you need something in between, depending on like what you're going to use it for. Um, some of the other things, though, remind me, Brandy, what did I even send to you? Well, like? just that, you know, again, what, what kind of usage um, yeah. and, and, um, and, and the price did... difference is, oh, I know, and the all-in-ones. Yeah. That was one of the things that MCC just went to the all-in-ones, which is a monitor that has the CPU, which is a processing unit, which we used to call the tower. Uh, most towers now aren't like they used to be, like this size. Most of them are more like this size, but they're smaller and more powerful. And now they even have them so that it's one piece to where the CPU is hooked to the monitor and then the keyboard and the mouse comes with it. So it's all one price, all one unit. Um, and they've been really happy with theirs. They've gone, so they buy all of these to put into the computer labs many, many of them, and they're using a, I can't say, Leveno, or something like that. Yeah, that, that I brand. they have chosen to go with Lenovo, Lenovo. all-in-one with an average of $500 each. Yes, that's what they have in their computer lab. But it all depends on, like, do you want, like, an i3 to an i5 would be a home computer, i5 to, well, no, i I3 to I4 would be home, I4 to I5 would be a business computer, I7 to I9 would be more like a gaming computer, or if you're going to do videos and have to do a lot, something that really requires a lot of power. And he, Eric uh, had quoted us for an I7. I7s. Okay, so, so that you're saying is more... That's very, very yeah, powerful. that's probably overkill. But it depends on what you're using, too. And I just can't imagine that you would be using... The computers you're using now and there, do they run okay? Mm -hmm. 
then that's not high power because the ones that you have in there probably are more like an I3 even. Yeah. Or very, very slow. That's why we call it very slow. Very slow. Well, so we need to look at we need to look at what you have now, definitely, and go. But what I'm saying is, I would be willing to sit down. I am no tech expert by any means, but I do know all of the things to look for. Um, you know, I do know how to bring up the specs and to to find out how fast it is, how much RAM it has, how much memory, you know, a whole bunch of different things, and then I can give those specs to somebody down there. They said they would be willing to give me more advice, but not willing really to give me a quote to where we, we could buy them through them. Instead, they referred me to Walter Barnes, and he's the IT guy at the Intermediate School District. He used to work at MCC. I knew him there at MCC, but he moved over to, the, to there, and he has a computer um, uh, business out of his home that he does that type of stuff. So he would be the one, you know, that if we find what we need, then go to him and say, this is what we need. We need one computer, you know, clearly for the security system, you'd want like a 4K monitor because you don't want, you want to be able to see very clear, you know, for security to see what you're looking at, that type of thing. Um, and then also, like, would a laptop serve you better than a desktop? Because you can buy a docking station. So you buy a laptop, and then you bring it in here, and you got a docking station. Just slide it into that docking station, and now your computer becomes a desktop. So there's that oh, possibility. Real quick, so Joyce, your BSNA system is cloud-based internet. Web based, I guess is what I don't. You don't have mm -hmm. a program downloaded on your computer, or you, you do have, so you. You have to back it up both ways. Okay. Right. So I gotta have it on both computers the cloud and my computer. Okay. And that's the main thing on your computer that you're. Is uh, other the tech program, yes. Yeah. Your tech is support and you know, Excel yeah. using that. DSNA gives you a whole list of all the requirements you need for when you buy a new computer. Yes. They have all these requirements. Yep, they usually do. They have those types of things. Yeah. Most, most, almost any program you have, QuickBooks, I'll tell you, this is your minimum that you need. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to go with minimum either. No, you don't want to. But um, you don't want to go, you know, with a gaming computer if you don't need that. Sure. And Todd, your computer is, I think you just said QuickBooks is, is on there, which is a great program. I mean, you have it. Um, but it's also a little... We've been, you and I have been sitting there working, <laughs> and it's a little quirky, I guess, that the computer. So, mm -hmm. um, but other than that, with your desktop, that's pretty much it. Yeah. And then the laptop is what you have your election stuff. Now, would you be wanting to put your election stuff on the desktop no. computer? Okay. No, we can take the laptop out to the PC. It has to. Okay. So, and that is in good shape. Yeah. Well, that's because that's where the okay. that's why we use him because he knows what to download to do. Yeah, I, I, he got, uh, they, they said very nice things about him, and I, I really like him, and I like the, his knowledge, and, and I, I really like what Ginger's saying also, mm -hmm. as far as, you know, maybe we could get the um, hardware a little cheaper, but at the same time, what's the value in having Eric as our... Yeah. I think it's important to have an IT person. Yeah. I think you guys really need that. Is and he from around here? Um, he's from up by Rosebush, but he... Um, he, he was here, but he's moved now. Yeah. Do you know he does website. websites, too? I do not know that. I don't, I don't know. He didn't mention it, but he has his own IT business. I was just curious. One um, thing I noticed on this quote is he's got two color printers. Oh, God. We don't need color. Mine don't need color. I don't need black and white. Yeah. So, I mean, that could bring down the cost some. Well, we need color printers. That's why we go to the color. Right now we have you have a printer and you have a printer and then we have a third printer, copier, right? We have a copier, yeah. Will a copier do Wi Fi? Well, well, well yeah. we have three printers. Three places you can print. Correct. Todd's desk, Joyce's desk, and then where Todd's laptop is. Yes. Okay. And that seems to be a pretty good printer so far. And your guys' is pretty good. They're, they're 
mine is not. Mine is barely like you can. It's getting where you can hardly read. Okay. Even if you put new toner in it, it's okay. getting so bad. At least need at least yeah. need one. But yeah, if we can share it, you know, put one in there instead of two. You know, with technology today. Well, we just doing this fast. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I don't think we need color yeah. for those because receipts don't need to be colorful. So you could potentially maybe use that, right? We would only need one. And uh, make sure you get one, a multifunction one that will also copy if you're going to get one. Cause well, we have, we have one that have a multifunction. See, we have a yeah. printer. Did the copier call? Yeah. 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 I'm sure Michelle wants to go. Uh, I don't think we need to get new toner for it, new yeah. colors. Hmm? I think we should have at least a, a so it called so it prints color too because there's going to be times that new I'm copier sure in there does. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm asking. Okay. Oh, you can hook your computer to it to print it from your computer. Yes. Uh, is it Wi-Fi? Yeah. yeah. Is it Wi-Fi compatible? I think so. It is. Judge says yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's done it. Yeah. And that's where he could probably hook when he comes in here to do all this. Also so work with that one too. It'll hook this all up. So yeah. Um, so, yeah, I agree. I don't think you need two. And then I, I, we talked a little bit about this last time. Do we need three computers? Um, and I think we do. I think Todd and Joyce need to have each have their own computer. They both have sensitive information. They both need to be separate. Keep those offices, separation of duties. And the third one is more... I guess I would peg it, and I think I saw it in his somewhere in his write-up that it's a security monitoring station, mm -hmm. and I thought that could feed into that car plan grant, um, which is also on our agenda because um, we. They said this when I went to that seminar, and it's also in their um, write-up for the grant. You can't ask for reimbursement for something you already spent, mm -hmm. and we already paid for the security um, contractor. But I thought maybe we could. You know, this computer's primary use is to have the security software on it. Um, we could um, modify that resolution Todd has in there um, and possibly get that paid for, so which would bring down the cost as well as going with just one black and white printer. Um, but yeah, I guess it's, yeah, maybe we're paying a little bit more for the hardware, but having that consultant who knows, has, has worked, I guess, with smaller townships, um, there, there's some, some value there, and uh, um, I guess anybody else have any thoughts? So he's available for the three years. I mean, if you come up with anything, well, he would wouldn't he be the one. He wouldn't be the one if there was an issue with the computer. Um, uh, for a warranty. That would be